Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, uh, Alan's Cloud. My name is Alan Samsel and in this video we're going to go through a process of shortening the URLs that you use for your hosted services inside of your network. Um, you know, this is a, a standard method using a reverse proxy, just kind of done in a different way and uh, I think it's very useful. I've been looking for a way to do this for a while now. Uh, and um, I, I think I've cracked it. I, I like this method. So I'm going to share that with you folks. For the ones of you who are uh, fairly advanced at this sort of thing, I'm going to put some instructions here next, which are the very high level instructions. Uh, and then when we get to the rest of the video here, I'm going to kind of step through it for uh, those of you who, who might need a little bit more instruction. So stick around. All right, so those were the instructions on how to do this, and we're going to kind of step through those uh, right now. Let's just get started. All right, uh, over here on the desktop, let me show you pretty much what it is we're talking about doing. Uh, when you self-host applications, it's usually a, um, you know, very, uh, the IP address and then a colon, and uh, then the port number of whatever service it is that you're running um, is, is usually the standard way of doing things. And uh, here under Heimbell, I'm, I'm actually using this new method. So you can see uh, what I have now in the browser is uh, HTTPS uh, and it is uh, secured. And uh, the certificate that I'm using is an intermediate uh, CA cert that I created in PFSense. And uh, pretty much I'm going to show you how to do that today so that you don't have to do IP address, you know, colon anything uh, in order to do this. And, and a, a prime example of that right now is, is a book stack here. Uh, so in the bottom left hand corner you can probably see that that actually goes to an IP address and um, here in the browser you can see it's not secure and um, that you have the IP address and then colon 9001 to get to this particular service. So what I'm going to show you here today is um, how to go about you know making that a secure connection inside of your network uh, you know covered by an SSL cert but via a uh, link and I'm going to call it um, bookstack.allen um, you know just like this home page here for Heimdall I called home.allen I want something that's short and simple and that I can remember and that's easy to use so what we're going to do in order to do that is um, we're going to use a combination of uh, pfSense some of the tools that are in there and the split DNS features of the um, DNS resolver in pfSense and we're also going to use a, um, an LXC or virtual machine, whichever one you want, uh, from Proxmox. And uh, in there, inside of Docker, we're going to run uh, a container of this Nginx proxy manager. Um, and this is, this is what's going to do our translating for us. Uh, and, and we'll get there. So first off, uh, under PFSense, here under the System and Cert Manager, uh, you're going to have to create uh, a root certificate and an intermediate certificate based off of that root certificate. And there are other videos that I'm not going to go into the details of that. I will put one down in the link uh, for a video that I think covers this process very well. But uh, once those are complete, um, you're going to come here to certificates and you're going to actually create a, a server certificate for that shortened link path that, that you know, we want. Uh, so in my case, uh, I'm going to create an initial certificate. Um, the descriptive name that it's going to be is bookstack.allen. And we're going to make it off of the intermediate certificate that I've created. Here the common name, again, bookstack.allen. And uh, I've filled in some of this other information um, and other than changing this certificate type here to server, um, you don't have to do anything else. We're going to hit save. And down here at the bottom, bookstack.allen exists, and we're going to download the cert uh, file right there. And we're going to download the key file because we're going to need those. Okay, so now that I have those downloaded and that created, uh, we're going to make our um, host override here in the DNS resolver. So under services, uh, DNS resolver here under the general tab, uh, under settings, you scroll down and um, 
when you make it the first time, this is the kind of the nice part. You, you're putting in the IP address that's going to point to the virtual machine that we're going to create. Um, so, you know, this may look like it's a little bit out of order, but since I already have this created, this is the IP address of the LXC or virtual machine in Proxmox that's going to host the Nginx proxy manager uh, in Docker. Uh, so when you create it the first time, you can actually come in here and create all of these other aliases that point to it. So we're going to add a host name here. So we're going to call this one Bookstack. And then Alan is going to be the domain. And this can be your name. That <laughs> obviously doesn't have to be mine. Uh, and we're going to hit save and apply changes. So pretty much at this point, our uh, split DNS uh, is going to be ready to point uh, an HTTPS, you know, or HTTP um, URL uh, to that IP address to resolve into, you know, where we want to go. So now that we have um, our certs created, uh, we have our DNS in place, we're going to go to our um, running instance of um, the Nginx proxy manager. And we're going to sign into that. And here under SSL certs, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, uh, add SSL cert, and you're going to click custom. That's very important because we're not going to use Let's Encrypt. Uh, we do need port 80 and 443 open, uh, and I'll get to that in a minute in the creation of the virtual machine. Um, but, you know, in my case, I'm running a website uh, already on 80 and 443. And I can't put this in between the two, so I'm just running this locally, uh, internally for my network only. But if you're running the Nginx Proxy Manager already, you can follow these steps if you're using PFSense or, or have a way to do this uh, split DNS uh, functionality. And you can come in here and instead of doing the Let's Encrypt cert, you know, you're going to create a custom one here. I'm going to put in my name, bookstack.allen. And then I'm going to browse and on the downloads here, this uh, first one is the key. We're going to hit open. Then we're going to get the cert for bookstack.allen. Uh, and then you don't need the intermediate. And then you're going to hit save. So now we have a custom uh, SSL cert uh, that is good until 2030. And uh, uh, we're going to go back here to hosts proxy hosts and as you can see these are the other services that I have uh, set up uh, you know one for my Proxmox itself uh, open media vault uh, one for uh, the nginx proxy manager itself and um, you know for Heimdall here which is home so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a uh, proxy host and here we're gonna call it bookstack dot Allen and then you have to hit enter so that it pops in there uh, and because uh, Bookstack is actually um, not secured normally, it is it is running on an HTTP. That's what we're going to do. And uh, here we're going to take the IP address, and it's on port uh, 9001. So back here, I'm going to paste that in, and 9001 right there. Then we're going to go here to SSL tab. We're going to select the one that we've just created for bookstack.allen. And then we're going to select force SSL because if we're going to use a cert, might as well force them to use it. And then we're going to hit save. So now that I have that in place, you can see here that I have, you know, an unsecured, um, you know, connection using the IP address uh, and port. But if I actually click on this uh, bookstack.allen, and here's the login page for uh, the book stack. Uh, now you can see that we do have the uh, lock up here. Uh, we're going to the correct address and it is covered by my intermediate uh, certificate authority here. Uh, now uh, book stack, uh, this didn't actually work at first. I took a pause in between the magic of editing there. Um, I had to go in and fix the stack for book stack. You actually have to call out an environment var variable for the address or you get an error. Um, so I had to go in there and actually add um, uh, app underscore URL equals and then that link there, https colon slash slash bookstack.allen 
and it actually works correctly as you can see and uh, you know we can log in and we got our cert okay log out of that and uh, so let's talk about uh, Proxbox how we tie this all together uh, getting this working here in my Proxbox instance I've got um, an LXC container here I've got a previous video on how to create an unprivileged uh, LXC container using a Ubuntu 1804 template that uh, comes with Proxmox and installing Docker inside of it. Um, so that's what I've done here. This is uh, an uh, unprivileged container right here, yes, uh, with the two options that you need in order to run Docker in there, uh, KeyCTL and nesting selected. Um, as far as resources, it's only a gig and uh, swap 512, one core, and eight gig for the hard disk. So I think those are the pretty much the minimal standards because you're only running this one thing out of it. But you have to run Docker in a container that doesn't have anything running on port 80 or 443 because that's what the Nginx proxy manager does uh, uses uh, to do its thing there. That's what it's listening on is those two ports. Um, so, you know, if you were thinking that you, hey, I run Open Media Vault and I've got Docker in there and I've got all those containers running, let's just throw this one in there. That's not going to work. Um, so again, to, to tie all that together, you have to have either uh, an LXC container or, um, you know, a, a small virtual machine. You could do it that way as well uh, with the minimal settings to run the Docker container. You follow the instructions here at uh, nginxproxymanager.com. They've got the setup here. Um, it's it's pretty easy, and I'm not going to cover that as well because, uh, quite frankly, there are a lot of other videos on how to set up the Nginx Proxy Manager, just not a lot of videos on uh, some of the goodness that, that you can have uh, and, and reasons to run it. Um, so... Um, I, you know, I, I think this is brilliant for me. I don't have to remember all of those IP addresses. Now Heimdall was uh, doing a, a good job of, uh, you know, um, putting all of that into one location. I didn't have to remember it so long as I put it in here. Um, but, you know, anywhere else on my network, um, I can, you know, go to these uh, addresses, you know, because I'm using that same DNS um, uh, server is, is my uh, PFSense box. And that split DNS is going to take me to these sites. Now, if I go to a uh, computer uh, that is on my network that isn't my main machine where I have imported those uh, root and intermediate uh, certificates that I had created, I imported those into Windows and I imported those into my browser. Now, if you don't do that and you're on a different machine, you'll still be able to get to the website. It'll just show up as a, um, uh, you know, a locally signed cert. Uh, so it will give you the warning, it will still give you the lock, but it will give you the triangle symbol up there. I think there's a lot of advantages in using this uh, Nginx Proxy Manager in this way. Um, you know, you run your little container, you create your search uh, with PFSense. Now there are other ways to do that. You could, um, you know, run a, a different container with a, um, you know, root certificate authority uh, server running inside of it in case, you know, some folks aren't using Proxmox. There are other ways to kind of stitch to this together, but I wanted to show you what could be done, um, you know, inside of your own network. None of these services are accessible outside of the internet. And, um, you know, I, I think it's really useful. It's a great way to manage your services and uh, be able to access them locally. So if uh, anybody has any questions about this, uh, please hit me up on my forum uh, or leave a comment in the video and um, I'll, I'll share whatever I can with uh, how to set this up properly. But uh, if this was useful to you, please uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm always looking for new, uh, new subscribers uh, to, to grow this channel even more than it is. So uh, thanks for that and uh, have a good one.